always look forward to partaking of communion with you. Uh, we're, we're working again from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me, One Year Communion Devotional. This is week 31, Release the Prisoners. Jesus came to release the prisoners. He opened the prison doors and set people free. He set them free from guilt, shame, condemnation, sickness, and disease. Jesus shed his blood for the remission of our sins. So what does that really mean? It means that he pardoned us. See, a pardon is an official act whereby someone who is judged guilty of a crime is allowed to go free without receiving the appropriate penalty for the crime. This is one of the benefits of the new covenant. Luke recorded the words of Jesus concerning the shedding of his blood and the remission of sins. Luke 22, 19 through 20. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. To receive the benefits of the covenant, you have to take the words of Jesus personally. You have to receive them by faith, being fully persuaded that this covenant is an ironclad agreement. There are people who actually stay in prison, even though Jesus has opened the prison door with the key of his blood. They are heirs of God, but they don't claim their inheritance by faith, and they don't, they don't live in their covenant rights. Uh, this reminds me of a story I heard a long time ago. Maybe you've heard it as well. A certain woman worked as a servant for a very rich man for many years. In fact, she worked for him until the day that he died. The woman, believing she was penniless, moved out of the house and into a cardboard shack, the only accommodation she could afford. She left the rich man's house with nothing except some scribbling on a piece of paper that the rich man had given to her. She either didn't read the scribbling or she couldn't read the scribbling. She simply put the piece of paper in a frame and placed it on the wall of her cardboard shack. She thought she was blessed to have a keepsake from her former employer to garnish the wall of her cardboard shack. Now, after the passing of time, two men came and knocked on the door of her cardboard shack. They were executors of the rich man's estate. They entered the cardboard shack and asked if she was the lady who had worked as a servant for the rich man. She acknowledged that she was the woman who had worked for the rich man. The men also noticed that there was a piece of paper on a frame in the wall of her cardboard shack. They asked the woman if they could look at the piece of paper with the scribbling from the rich man. Then they proceeded to translate the writing for her. As it turned out, the piece of paper was the will and testament of the rich man. He had willed everything to the woman who served him so faithfully for all of those years. She was a wealthy woman, but she didn't know it. Consequently, she was confined to a cardboard shack. We are heirs of God, but we'll continue to live in a cardboard shack if we don't discover what belongs to us. We'll take up permanent residence in the shack of guilt and condemnation if we don't read and appropriate the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. We'll stay in the cardboard shack of guilt if we don't embrace and act upon the Scriptures, God's will for our lives. Listen to Romans 5, 9. Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. We'll stay in a cardboard shack of shame if we leave the will on the wall in a picture frame. Titus 2.14, the New Living Translation. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. We'll close ourselves into a shack of sin based on our sin consciousness. We'll continue our effort to work our way into God's graces and his righteousness. The document on the wall tells us that we can't earn our way out of our cardboard shack. He's already made us righteous in Christ. We can stand in the Father's presence with no sense of inferiority. Listen to Titus 3, 3 through 7, the New Living Translation. Once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. But when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. 
He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior, and because of His grace, He declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Why do we stay cooped up and confined in the cardboard shack of sickness and disease when the Bible says that we were healed? 1 Peter 2.24, lots of scriptures today. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. As you partake of communion, look at the four walls of your life. Are those walls made of cardboard? Are those walls made of iron and steel? Are they spattered with the graffiti of guilt and condemnation? Are you incarcerated by shame and inferiority, the confines of your previous master? Are you living in the tight quarters of the crucible of sickness and disease? I have a scripture for you that will help you to take God's word off of the wall of your cardboard shack and make it personal for you. Zechariah 9, 11 through 12, the Message Bible. And you, because of my blood covenant with you, I'll release your prisoners from their hopeless cells. You can receive the benefits of God contained in the will and testament of Jesus Christ. As you partake of communion today, switch your focus from your current condition. Your situation may seem hopeless, but it isn't. All things are possible with God, and all things are possible for those who believe. So use these communion elements as a point of contact to release your faith in God and be assured that God will fulfill his promises to you. Jesus is the surety of the new covenant. And as the surety, he's the personal guarantee of the terms of the new and better covenant secured on the ground of his perfect sacrifice. Continue in the word. And that word will not only set you free, it will make you free. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that you have made us free, God, as we continue in your word. You said that you'd make us free as your disciples. So, God, we come out of our cardboard shacks and the limitations that we have because of our lack of knowledge of your word. And, God, we take and partake of your word that says that we have an inheritance in you, and that inheritance is contained in your word. Let us partake together.